Kwanga Likushize Ulivivi Livuname Father King of Glory We give you glory and the honor Lima Kushi Kriya Zata We exalt you because of God we magnify your holy name because you are being so faithful unto us. We exalt your precious name on high because you are our God. For you are our being, O King of Glory. You are the breath that we breathe in and out, O God. You are the life we are living for on a daily basis, O King of Glory. Father, you are the only one who has ordered our steps, O King of Glory. And our treasure is in you and in you alone. We love you, King of Glory. We exalt you. Holy Spirit, you are most welcome in this place. We love you, for you are our people. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen and amen. Yes, praise the living God, saints. Once again, it is a new day. It is a glorious day, it is a marvelous day, it is a wonderful day, it is an awesome day that the Lord has done. And I want to promise you that whosoever is with us at this particular moment, God is going to do you much more and abundantly good than you had expected. He's going to bless you because the Bible says that the masses of God are new each and every morning. So, today, I uh, want to thank God for He has made it once again that we are in His presence. So, for you who has not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, please make sure that you press that red, that red bell down. It is always down uh, uh, at, at our, our, our video. It is always down. So, press that red button so that you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll be able to view uh, more of our videos and I know God is going to bless you abundantly. Currently we are operating with YouTube and uh, Facebook uh, and I know that when you always keep with us, God is going to bless you abundantly. We are yeah, we shall be reading in the book of Joel, that is chapter 2. We shall begin from verses uh, 22. The Bible says, Be not afraid, ye beast of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you for for he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to, to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the later rain in the first month. And the flowers shall be full of wheat, and the first shall overflow, the first shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts has eaten, and kangaroo, and the caterpillar, and the palmworm, my great army, which I send among you. And ye shall eat in plenty, and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. Praise the living God. Yeah, so that is the word of God. Uh, yesterday, uh, I was a bit distressed and I was uh, uh, taken so deep in the thought. Uh, the, all of the previous week I've been going through uh, something I have been going through a certain situation which was not good on my side. So I was thinking about this situation, then I was like, why has this come upon my life? And why why is this coming to pass? Why is this happening? So while I was uh, I was in the bathroom I had gone to take a shower 
you know, for me, whenever I go to take a shower, <laughs> I start praising, I start praying. I've made a shower room as uh, my praying room as well, and uh, my praising and worshiping room as well. So I started worshiping. I started praising. Then I started praying while showering. I was taking a shower, but I was like Rabba, Koji, Kiya, Zataba, Libazi. I was preaching to myself. I was saying, tomorrow wanna be greater than today. My tomorrow wanna be greater than today. And today is greater than yesterday. And what tomorrow is bringing, today has never seen it. I started preaching to myself. Praise the living God. So my brother, my dear sister who is outside there, become the prophet of your soul. Become the preacher of your soul. Do not wait for the prophet to speak something into your life. <laughs> Otherwise, you are going to squat to death. Do not wait for the preacher to come and preach to you. Be a preacher of your soul. I want to tell you, I preach to my soul. I started speaking these words. I said tomorrow wanna be greater than today. Because I thought about this word. When the Lord says that, uh, the word which says that, for the glory of God, for the mercies of God are new every morning. So I was like, hmm, they are new every morning. What does this mean? So it means every day that comes it comes with a new glory. Every day that we enter into, we enter into that day with the new glory. And I want to promise you, my brother, my dear sister, never are the days the same. For when today is gone, today it is 19th of, uh, of July, this 2020. So when a 19th of July, 2020 goes, it will never come again. It will never come again until Jesus comes back. Even though Jesus comes back, never will 19th of July 2020 come again to pass. So every day that comes, it also goes. And I want to tell you this, every day it carries its own glory. And the Bible says that for the masses of God are new every morning. For the masses of God are new every morning. For he has told us here in Joel that I want to bring the rain. And the later rain and the former rain will cause the fats to overflow. You know the fats. Eh? Yeah, the fats, it will cause the fats to overflow. Now these people he's talking unto, these are the people who have been confounded. These are the people who have been scorned. These are the people who have been abandoned for some time. You know, Israel had always had uh, issues with God and God had abandoned it for some time. But even though he has abandoned it for some time, his everlasting love has been always kindled upon this land of Israel. That is the love of God. His loving kindness has been kindled upon these people. That is the loving kindness of God. Each and every new morning, he was thinking about them. He was thinking about them. That is our God who will never abandon us, who will never leave us alone, who will never leave us to be ashamed. So every day it comes with its new glory. Every day is a new day. For he says, oh yeah, barren rejoice. For the glory of God is risen upon you. Praise the living God. Uh, I want to tell you that there are no permanent situations in life. For me, I lived with this word since my childhood. There was a situation I went through while I was in the age of, between the age of 18 and the age of uh, 20. Yeah. 
between the age of 18, the age of 21, age of 22, around those, uh, around that period, there was something I was going through. But I used to listen to this uh, song. I, I think it is a Bongland last one, I don't know. Tewari Mbeira, Katunda Jiyatu, Nangaya Kuvera, Oru Velera, La 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 So there are no permanent situation in life. There are no permanent conditions in life. When you have slept today hungry, just know that tomorrow you want to get bread to eat. When things are on your mind and they have put you down, just know tomorrow you want to rise up again and you will continue moving again. When you see things have stepped on you today, do not lose hope, my dear brother, for the Bible says, for the mercies of God are new each and every morning. For you want to cause the rain to rain upon that situation. For you want to cause the rain to rain upon that situation and you want to gain life once again. Are you facing a dead situation in your life? Have you faced a dead day? You may would have faced a dead day in your life. But I want to promise you that surely as the Lord we serve is living, He want to cause the former and the later rain to rain upon you. And I want to tell you that that dead day, it want to sprung for the Bible says that He will cause the fights to overflow. Ribako jekeya zakataba. He want to cause the fights to overflow. For He has said, that he will restore unto you the years. He will restore. Do you know what? What, what means by God restoring all the years, the cangworms, the caterpillars, the locusts have eaten? Do you know what it means? How many tears have you cried, my brother, my dear sister? You have cried many tears. You have cried for long. But I want to tell you, I want to promise you the mere fact that you are still living. <laughs> Here comes a promise of God. The mere fact that you are still living, the mere fact that you are still having this breath of life, the mere fact that you are still speaking, the mere fact that the voice still comes out of you. Here he brings a promise. <laughs> that I will restore unto you. That I will restore unto you. My dear brother, have you faced a lot of stuff in your life? He says that you want to restore unto you all those years which the caterpillars have eaten. He want to restore all those years unto you which the locusts have destroyed. I know the enemy had risen against you. But the Lord wanna restore unto you. For he says, O rejoice, O ye barren. For the barren has produced seven. Praise God. Hannah spoke that word when she has only produced one kid. But she saw that one kid as seven. But indeed the prophet was, was coming out of her, her belly. For the prophecy was coming out of her belly because later on she produced again and again and again. Praise the living God. So, friends, just rejoice in the Lord. Each and every day rejoice in the Lord. Each and every morning rejoice in the Lord. That is the only weapon you can use against your enemy. The devil is threatened by your rejoicing in the Lord. The only weapon you can use against the enemy, the only weapon you can use against Satan is you rejoicing. Is you rejoicing. Some of us would have died some time back, but we have looked unto things as if we have not seen them. We have watched stuff come and pass away. Things come unto our lives, they hit us. And then some people think that maybe we are God. They think that maybe, ah, now it is his last time. 
but we are meant once again strong and strong again. I want to tell you, my dear brother, my dear sister, every situation which comes in your life, it has come to shake you, but just know it has come to make you more stronger. It has come to make you more greater. For I, uh, I was talking with a certain engineer one time, and then I asked him, why do you like these uh, bricks which are uh, more, more, heat, uh, more heated and which are uh, uh, a bit, which have gone a bit uh, in deep? furnace in the middle of the furnace they told me that uh, every brick which is harder which can make a building stronger must have gone through a deep furnace and a deep heating and a deep fire that is what they told me so my brother every situation which has come your way every situation which is coming your way those are just nothing as compared to the glory God is taking us into. That situation is just nothing as compared to the glory God has prepared before us. It is just nothing. It is just nothing. It is just only preparing you into that glory. It is only just preparing you into that glory. It is going to act as the stepping stone that when you stop, you step on it like this, you will jump into your glory. That is the situation which is prevailing. So my brother, my dear sister, never lose hope in life. Do not look unto that situation which you are going through. But look unto the glory God has prepared before you. For he said that he will never bring you to shame. He will never bring you to shame. Let me tell you one thing. I have believed the word of God. I have believed the word of God to the extent that even though you can bring the knife and you put on my neck like this, I will still say, I will live and see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Even though you bring your gun, got very well, and you put it on my belly, I will still tell you, I will not die, but I shall surely live and see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Because the Bible says, he has promised us that all those who have believed on the name of Jesus, they have life. He who has the Son of God has life. He who has the Son of God has life. And he says that I am come to give life and life in abundance. So when the Son of God is inside of me, when Christ lives inside of me, what will you threaten me? What will threaten me? Are the guns going to threaten me? Is the prevailing situation going to threaten me? For he has promised me that he has come to give me life and life in the balance. And the Bible says that the words Christ speaks, they are spirit and they are life. I can just only imagine that every word Christ spoke, it was like, it was a heartbeat. It is a heartbeat in our lives. So there is no any situation which can take you off track, my brother. Let no there be any situation which may take you off track. For he that promised is faithful. I have trusted the word of God that never before. I know that he cannot lie. I am more than convinced. I am more than convinced. The word of God cannot lie. There is no any ground where God can stand like this and then start lying that you know what we I will bring you to the greater glory. And then he does it not. For he says that he's not the son of man to lie. He's not the son of man to speak what he cannot fulfill. The Bible says that the world and fullness belongs to our Father. So if the world 
and his fullness and all those things which are in need belong to God. Is there anything too hard for him? For he says that I am the Lord God of all the flesh. Then he asks a question, is there anything too hard for me? He asks a question, is there anything too hard for me? So let me also pose a question. My brother, my dear sister, is there anything too hard for God? I want to tell you one thing. There is nothing too hard for God. For he is a good God. He who knew that the ears must be on the sides of the head, but not on the back of the head, he is still faithful to bring you to this other glory. He who knew that the nose must be in front and not on your back, he has the good plans for you. He who passed that he put you in this world, the good engineer he who first put you in his mind and then he put you on the paper and then finally he bring you to the ground he started constructing you he started molding you he started building you he started creating you and then the bible says that he breathed the breath of life into your nostrils and then you became a living soul my god he breathed the breath of life into you into your nostrils so you carry the life inside of you. You carry the life of God inside of you. I just only imagine God facing you, nose to nose, mouth to mouth. And then the Bible says that he breathed into you the breath of life into your nostrils. It means he put his mouth on your nose. He breathed into you and you became a living soul. He who did that, can he forsake you? Can he abandon you? I am more convinced. I am more convinced. I am more convinced that he who breathed into my nostrils, the breath of life, can forsake me. I am more convinced. No matter which situation comes my way, it has only come to check me. It has only come to check me. For there is no faith except it be tested. Okay, let me say like this. Your faith is not faith except it be tested. The untested faith, it is not faith. Untested faith is not faith. Okay, I'm trying to mean that when you're hoping or when you're having faith in God, the Bible says that the faith is the substance of things hoped for. And every man who comes to God must believe that God is and he is the reward of all the things. Otherwise, it says that without faith, no man can please God. So, the faith which is not tested is not faith. So I'm trying to say like this. When you have faith in God, that in the mighty name of Jesus, I will build a mansion. When you have that faith and you have trusted in God, you have put all your trust in God. Now here comes a situation. You are surviving, you have that hope. While you are still sleeping in the grass, in a grass touched house, very deep in the village, never even has come one million in your pocket. At times you go even past, you, you go even without eating lunch or supper, not because that you're fasting, but because you were unable to get that meal on your table. So that is the situation which comes your way, but still you have faith. Still you have faith and you're more persuaded that God can do much more and abundantly and above all 
you have that faith, my dear brother, my dear sister. So every situation that comes your way, it comes to check your faith. It comes to test your faith that even though you're still in the grass thatched house, but still you have faith in God that He want to bring you unto your vision, that this same God you want to bring you to build a mansion. That even though you are on foot, that you will come, it will come to pass that you will be driving. That is the faith in God. And the Bible says that you will never bring us to shame those who has trusted him, who have trusted in him. Those who have believed in him, he will never bring them to shame. But surely he says. He will fulfill all your desires. He will bring all of them to pass. That is the God we serve. What I only want to tell you, put your trust in God. And believe in the word of God. That whatsoever the word of God says is true. Whatsoever the word of God says is true and surely it will come to pass. He got no ground to lie. He got no ground to lie. He's not the son of man to lie. Why should he lie? What does he lack? What does he lack? The word and fullness and all the people thereof belongs to God. What does he lack? He lack nothing. So therefore, my brother, my dear sister, let your full trust be in God. Let your full confession be in God. Let no situation come your way which will make you confess negatively against your word. Let nothing come your way which will make you confess negatively in the presence of God. For we are the children of God. The Bible says that this is therefore love made perfect that God gave his son Jesus Christ as a propitiation. In other words, as a turning sacrifice to our sins. And the Bible says that as he is in heaven, so are we here on this world. As God is in heaven, so are we on this world. As Christ is in heaven, so are we on this world. Does Christ become sick? He does not become sick. So I cannot become sick. When malaria has come your way, it has only come to test your faith. It has only come to shake your faith. But when you stand your ground and you understand that as Christ is in heaven, for he does not become sick. So I am here on this world. I shall not become sick. And sickness is not my portion. When you understand that, my dear brother, my dear sister, you shall surely live. That's what we call the living faith. This is what we call the living faith. Praise the living God. Ezekiel had this faith that the God himself can change also his word. The Bible says that oh, during those days, God sent a prophet Isaiah to go to Ezekiel to speak unto him these words. He told, God told Isaiah that go into the house of Ezekiel and you tell him these words. Tell him that prepare your house for behold you shall not live and you shall die. The Bible says that during those days, Ezekiel was sick. So, Prophet Isaiah went unto Ezekiel and then told all what the Lord has said. And then he said, Man of God, prepare your house. Behold, you shall not live, but you are going to die. Ezekiel hearkened, listened unto the word of the prophet. So after uh, Prophet Isaiah has spoken those words unto Ezekiel, he departed. Now Ezekiel turned unto the world. The Bible says that Ezekiel turned unto the world. And then he said, God, remember the good I have done in your presence. 
Remember the good I have done in your presence. And may you give me the life for the second time. It is not yet done what I'm supposed to do. And the Bible says that God gave him life once again. He gave him more than 15 years. Do you know what it means? To you, for you as rich, your deathbed, or when you are on, on the back of death, and then God gives you more 15 years. When God has spoken that word unto the ears of uh, Ezekiel, that I have increased your lifespan, that I have added you more 15 years, Ezekiel said, Lord God, I want you to show me the sign. And then God said, okay, the feet of the prophet who came to tell you that you are going to die, they are not yet reached in his house. Behold, he is coming back to tell you the same thing I told you. And I want to tell you, prophet Isaiah came back and then told this word which God has spoken into the ears of Ezekiel, into his ears again that God has added you for 15 years. You shall surely not die, but you shall live. That is the faith we have, my brother, my dear sister. That is the faith that shaped the throne of God. That is the faith that shaped God. Remember the Bible says that without faith no man can please God. So it means with faith, God is pleased with our faith. God is pleased with our faith. Praise the living God. God is really pleased with our faith. So, have faith in God, my brother. Have faith in God, my dear sister. He has promised to restore all the years which have been eaten by the camels, which have been eaten by the locusts. We know our place. We are in the sacred places of God. He has enclosed us with his glory. He has covered us with his coat. No matter what Satan may do against us, he got nothing in our lives. For Christ said that, I will speak not much again, for I am going out for the prince of this world who is the devil, Satan is coming. And then Christ spoke a word. He said, he got nothing in me. He has nothing in me. In other words, Satan has nothing in Christ Jesus. Therefore, if we are in Christ Jesus, for he said that if you abide in me and you abide in me, if you abide in me and I abide in you, you shall do much greater things. So we are in Christ Jesus. The Bible says that we are complete in him, the head of all the principality, who is Jesus Christ. So if we are in him, the Bible says, the same Bible says, in him we live, we move, and we have our being. If we are inside the Christ Jesus, and the Bible says, and Christ said this word, then he says that Satan has nothing in him. So if we are inside the Christ, it means Satan has nothing in us. Even though he brings these other terrible things which may, which may terrify us, eh? he may bring a certain temptation. The temptation comes from the devil. If he comes to tempt us, they are but without. They are outside of us, but they are not inside of us. Inside of us, we know that he has nothing in us. For we are the children of the Most High God. For we are complete in Christ Jesus. Satan has nothing in us. Even though he brings the so-called pandemic, he has nothing in you. Even though he puts before the pandemic, which may terrify your life, he got nothing in you. Praise the living God. Satan may bring something. For what the devil brings are not inside of us. For inside of us we carry the glory of God, but they are without. The devil brings from outside, so that when we see with our eyes, we are terrified. But whenever you get to understand your point, whenever you get to understand who you are, 
Never will you be terrified, my dear brother. Never will you be terrified, my dear sister. You will just stand your ground. You will stand your ground and you will say, I know who I am. I know who I am. I know he who called me is faithful. Even to bring me to where he has called me into. For the Bible says that God has called us unto the place of virtue. He has called us unto the place of virtue and power. For his promises are yes and amen. For he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. For he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. What will thou need? What you only need? You need God. And all the things shall come after you. What you all need, you need to seek his righteousness and his kingdom. And all these other things shall come running after you. Father, King of glory, in the mighty name of Jesus, I give you praise and honor. Thank you for this wonderful word you have spoken unto us. Holy Spirit, I love you. I exalt you for your marvelous, for your awesome. There is none who is like you. Surely, as you have promised, you will surely bring it to the fulfillment. You will restore all the years which have been eaten by the camels and the cataclysm and the locusts. Thank you, Lord, for someone whom you are restoring right now. Thank you for the life of someone you are restoring right now, God. Thank you for the business of someone you're restoring right now. Thank you for the marriage you're restoring right now. Thank you, King of God, for the, res for the relationship you're restoring right now. Thank you, Abba, Father, for someone's job you're restoring right now. I love you. We exalt you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We do pray and we pray. Amen. 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 So, my brother, my dear sister, if you're sick, I believe beyond the extraordinary that if you have listened to this message, you are surely healed in the mighty name of Jesus. If you have been having problems at your workplace, I'm more than convinced that if you have listened to this gospel, to this message, surely your job has been restored. I am sure that if you have listened to this message from where I began from, and your business is down, you're bringing it up right now in the mighty name of Jesus. So for you, my brother, my dear sister, if you are not born again, and you want to receive Christ Jesus, I cannot live without giving you this great opportunity that you receive Christ Jesus as your personal savior because he is the author and he is the finisher of this faith I'm talking about. He's the beginning and he is the end. He's the alpha and he is the omega of all that we desire and of all that we think about. He is everything we desire. So, you just need him. I'm saying you must have him, Christ Jesus. So, if you are there and you want to be born again, you're going to pray this prayer with me. Say, dear Lord, I come in your presence. I know that I've been a sinner who had gone astray. But now I know that Jesus is the truth, the way, and the life. So from today, I receive you in my life as my personal savior. And from today onwards, I am born again. Amen. So my brother. So my brother, if you have prayed that prayer with me, just know that you are really born again. You keep with us here in spirit and life ministry. And I know. And I know that God is going to bless you abundantly again and again. And I know that you are going to keep in the spirit and you will grow. That is what God wants us to, to be. He wants us to grow. Yeah, I know that God is going to bless you abundantly. I love you so much. May God do you good. May God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. See you. Bye-bye.